Good afternoon, uh, friends, uh, family, and colleagues. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this very happy occasion, uh, where in my first month as Oregon's 38th governor, I have the great privilege of administering the oath of office to Jean Atkins, Oregon's 25th Secretary of State. Yay. <laughs> And we also believe, we haven't tracked it down, but that uh, Ms. Atkins is the first Oregon Secretary of State from Washington County. <laughs> Yay! So I know from personal experience that Oregonians are going to be well served by Secretary Atkins. Smart, efficient, and collaborative, she knows the importance of inclusive leadership, and she doesn't shy away from hard decisions. With her depth and breadth of experience in the realm of public service and policy making, I have every confidence that she will keep the ship steady and on course. We are in very good hands. So, uh, Jean, are you ready to take the oath of office? I am. Okay. Do you wish to swear or affirm? I will affirm. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jean Atkins, I, Jean Atkins, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Oregon, and the Constitution of the State of Oregon, and that I will faithfully discharge, and that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of Secretary of State, the duties of Secretary of State, for the State of Oregon, for the State of Oregon, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Well, thank you all. What a room. Um, thank you, Governor Brown, for giving me this tre tremendous opportunity to serve the people of Oregon. Thank you for your confidence in me, and thank you for your support. The values, the commitment, and the en energy enthusiasm you just demonstrated during your years as Secretary of State are an inspiration for me, and I will be diligent in carrying out the responsibilities of this unique public office. Thanks to all of you who, for being here to share this shining moment with me, my friends and colleagues and former colleagues, and my family members who stood, be, stood behind me that I want to introduce. My husband, John. So, um, so three days ago on what was the most brilliant um, March Sunday in Oregon in many years, I think, we drove to Cannon Beach um, to commemorate our uh, honeymoon that was spent there uh, and uh, celebrate our 43rd wedding anniversary. Right. Um, <laughs> clearly, I would be nowhere near here were it not for John Atkins. There's no question about it. My son, also John, who, <laughs> who many of you know from his years working actually in the Capitol um, and across the street at the De Department of Consumer and Business Services. He flew in from Texas to use his last ever spring break um, <laughs> in his third year of law school um, to be with his mother on her big day. So thank him for that. <laughs> My sister Terri Ann, who interrupted important school leadership uh, obligations to drive up from Nevada City, California, to join us today. Thank you, Terri Ann. <laughs> we are all thinking of my late parents today, um, Roger and Ann Paquette. Both of them has lo had long careers as teachers and as active citizens of their community. They both cared deeply about community, about justice and inclusive democracy and public service. We miss them both today. 
I was raised in our neighbor state to the north, um, but I have long been an Oregonian. My mother was born in Portland. My parents met at Linfield College. Um, my sister and I enjoyed uh, weekends and or, uh, uh, weeks and Cannon Beach vacations back when it was just a few cabins on the Ecola uh, Creek estuary. John and I moved to Oregon first together in 1973, a year after we were married. We lived in Corvallis for seven years, and then an opportunity for John to serve on uh, former Congressman Lessa Coyne's staff um, took us to Washington, D.C., where I had my first professional job as staff attorney for the Women's Equity Action League. We very much enjoyed our years in Washington, and some of our friends from that uh, era are here with us today. Um, but after the birth of our son, uh, we came back to Oregon because this is where we wanted to be, and this is where we wanted John to grow up. My husband and I have both had great opportunities over the 30 years since then uh, to make contributions through our work. Between us, we've worked in Washington County, where we've lived, um, here in Salem, and in other Oregon towns as varied as Portland, Westland, and Malala. Having worked in public health for many years and as state director for Senator Merkley the last five years, I can truthfully say I've been to every county in Oregon, many of them more than once, um, and I appreciate all of their historical and cultural uniqueness. Now I've been given the opportunity to protect and strengthen some of our deepest values as Oregonians free, open, and fair elections, openness and transparency in government, public access to state government records, the safeguarding of our historical and official state documents, helping Oregon businesses grow and thrive by making it easier to start and register a business in Oregon, and accountability for our state agencies and offices. It's my great privilege to have taken this oath and to become your next Secretary of State. As a separate and distinct constitutional office, the work of the Secretary of State is of fundamental importance to the people of Oregon. I'm grateful to my predecessors in this office, including Governor Brown, and I think maybe former Secretary Kiesling is here. Um, others weren't, there he is. Um, others weren't able to, to make it. I'm very grateful to them for making, uh, setting this agency on a good path for success during their terms. But there is vital work to be done over the next two years. And now, as Oregon's new Secretary of State, I look forward to bringing my ideas, my experience, and my focus in partnership with legislative leadership, other statewide leaders, county governments, and the leadership and staff at the Secretary of State's office to move that work forward. In the time available to me in this special and distinct office, I intend to work every day to improve our government and build public trust. So thank you all for coming. It's time for me to stop talking and do some work. Uh, I very much appreciate it. We are having a little reception down, downstairs that we want to get to, but I will come around and um, take a few questions from the press before we leave. Thank you all. Jean's got to talk to some people, and if there's additional questions you guys want, we can set up some one-on-one -on -one later. Can you go back to the microphone, please? I will. Uh, I'd like to ask if uh, when the governor signs House Bill 2177 on automatic voter registration, uh, that thrusts uh, some new duties upon the Secretary of State. Uh, what are you preparing to do to implement that bill? Well, it is something that comes into implementation upon signing of the, of the governor. The team has been working, as Secretary of State did before me, to get ready for that time. Uh, we, also, we have some resources issues to resolve with the legislature to make sure we've got everything we need to get it done, but we're going to get to work on it. It's an important concept, an important bill, and it's important we do it successfully. Any plans uh, so far to, to run in two years? I do not plan to run in two years. I had a very successful retirement going, um, and um, <laughs> it's been described as an epic fail retirement um, by some of my some of my friends. But um, but I'm calling it practice retirement. Uh, perfect will be again in January of 2017. So. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.